Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Spooky Repots. This is episode 3 and it is going to be the final installment for this year. We've reached the end. Thank you so much for embarking on this journey with me over the past few weeks leading up to Halloween. Again, a huge thank you to everyone who has submitted their stories. I really appreciate it. Spooky Repot would not be possible without you. And I've just thoroughly enjoyed reading through and sharing all of them. We are back into crafting mode for today's episode. I have made two planters that I have to share with you. And while I'm happy with how they turned out, I definitely struggled creating them. So if it looks like I'm struggling in the footage, it's because I was. I'm gonna show you how they turned out. Y'all know the drill, I don't explain what I'm doing throughout the video, we're just going to be listening to the stories, but I will put the instructions that I followed down in the description box, and I'll also link the video that I took inspiration from, which made it look a lot easier than it, than I experienced it to be. But that video also includes some other cool DIY spooky planters, so if you're looking for more content, then um, yeah, I'll link that one down below. So the planters that we will be making in this video are these ones. This is supposed to be like an embossed looking planter. This one has a snake on it and like I said I'm pretty happy with how it turned out but um, yeah it was a bit of a a bit of a journey to get to this point. I originally had three snakes on here and the other two wouldn't stay on so i've ended up just going with the one snake and i do think that it looks really cool i'm quite happy with it i did want to plant my philodendron serpents in here but that plant is struggling a little bit right now so i'm gonna hold off on that but for now we have my philodendron florida ghost in here and i think that it turned out pretty awesome so yeah there is the first one that i made and then the second one that I made is currently housing, oh my goodness, I need more hands for this. The second one is currently housing my philodendron gigas, but it is another embossed planter, but this one has bones on it. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it came out, especially with how much I was struggling throughout the, the making of these. I thought that they weren't going to turn out at all but they did I've kind of been experimenting with putting different plants in these I'm just using both of them as cover pots so I can kind of switch it up and I can store them away and take them out every Halloween season so yeah that is the bone one I think that it looks really cool with darker plants so that's kind of what I've been going for so those are the planters that we are going to be creating in this video. We're now going to jump into the spooky stories, so just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Story number one. I was about seven years old, my brother about ten. It was well past our bedtime when our mom woke up off the couch to put us to bed. Our dad worked construction out of town back then, so it was often just us three at the house for weeks at a time. Up the stairs and to the immediate right was our parents' bedroom. Going left puts you in the middle of a hallway. Taking another left down that hallway led to my brother's room. The opposite end was my room, which was also across the hall from our upstairs bathroom. At either end of the hallway are windowed doors we always kept locked and rarely used. The door on my end led to a balcony overlooking our front yard, and the door on my brother's end opened to our back porch. My brother and my mom both had a habit of waking up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. 
I only knew this because I was always a light sleeper and they just couldn't help flushing with the door wide open. This night, however, my brother stopped on his way to his room and came back towards the bathroom. I'm gonna try to pee before I go to bed. The past few nights, I've been too afraid to walk to the bathroom. I keep seeing a man wearing stripes at the end of the hallway. I don't know if my mom wrote it off as my brother telling ghost stories to try to scare me, or if she was already half asleep and didn't catch it, but she didn't react at all to my brother's confession. I, on the other hand, was terrified by it. The fear of seeing a ghost like that at the end of the hallway or through the windows is the reason I started running from the stairs to my bedroom at night. Years later, when I was about 18, my mom and I were having a conversation in her car about a dog we had for a very short time when I was little. We were sharing stories about Max's tendency towards destroying my shoes and other unruly behaviors when my mom blurted out, do you remember that time I opened the front door for the cops and Max ran inside to the kitchen and started tearing open that big bag of dog food we had? This really caught me by surprise because in all the years I lived in that house, we never once called the cops. I asked her what she was talking about and she looked equally surprised as if she had just revealed something by accident. Oh, that's right. I never told you because you were too young at the time. One night, I woke up hearing noises outside my window and when I looked, I saw a man staring into my bedroom. She went on to describe how turning on the lights caused him to take off running and how she grabbed my dad's pistol before calling the cops. I can't remember all the details I gave them when they showed up. Tall white male, wearing a striped shirt and jeans, short dark hair, something like that. They said it matched the description of a man they were looking for in the area. It turns out he had escaped from jail on a murder charge. Now I know it sounds so obvious, hearing those two stories back to back, but it wasn't until a few years ago, in my mid-twenties, that I pieced together that my brother had unknowingly warned us about a murderer who spent multiple nights casing our home. Story number two. Where I live in Canada, there's a beautiful waterfall about an hour away. It's a lovely hike through dense forest trails to get to the falls. I used to go there often with my partner, but we had never been there in the winter time, so we decided to go one mild winter day to see what the falls looked like at that time of year. We were pleasantly surprised when we arrived to see the parking area empty as in the warmer months, it's usually pretty busy there, but we now had the place to ourselves. It was such a nice day and the trails were manageable, though we had to take our time and be careful because it was slippery. We made it to the falls and they looked amazing, slightly frozen over the veil and just beautiful. While my partner and I were paused at the lookout site, we noticed back down the trail we had come from, someone was approaching. It looked like a very tall lady walking with a cane. As this person got closer, we realized that they were oddly dressed considering the weather. A thin trench coat and a silk colorful headscarf, dark sunglasses. I wish I could remember the footwear, but I didn't take notice at the time. As this person got close, I offered a hello and got no response. This person passed us on the narrow trail very slowly and angled her face towards mine as she passed. As she did, I noticed the face seemed just strange. It was very pale, but also seemed to be covered in thick caked on makeup. This is when my partner and I both got a chill. We both looked at each other, and my partner simply said, I think we need to go. The person was already out of sight down the trail, so we started to head back the opposite way, which would lead us back to the parking lot. It's not far, maybe a 15 minute hike, 
and there's a few different trails that weave together that you can take. We took the main trail and noticed that coming from another trail was this same strange person walking along, looking at the ground, and then looking up at us. Except this time, they were carrying the cane. My partner said, there's no way. How did she get there from... We started to hustle now. Looking back, the person was gone. As we got further ahead, getting closer to the parking area, there was a fork where two of the trails merge, and yet again, we saw this person coming towards us, this time walking very quickly. We couldn't understand how this person had gotten to that trail from where we had last seen her. I wish I had called out or said something, but instead my partner and I just held hands and hustled down the slippery trail as fast as we could. We got to the parking area, and still, there was no other vehicles there. We ran to the car, got in, locked the doors, started it up, and looked back. At the entrance to the trail, we saw the head-scarfed, trench-coated, dark, sun-glassed person, this time cane back in hand, but gripping it at both ends, and not quite running, but charging towards our car. We wasted no time and peeled out of that parking lot, and as I looked back, the person was now running after us, but was soon out of sight as we drove away. I've been back to the falls many times since then, but never again in the winter time. My partner at the time and I split long ago, but I sometimes think about this and want to reach out to him and ask, did that really happen? It haunts me to this day, and I can still feel the terror in my gut that I felt then. Story number three. I went to college in New England, where every town seems to have a ghost story or legend. It's like the macabre is embedded in the soil there. When I was a sophomore, I lived in the attic of a dorm that was formerly a mansion. The mansion was built in 1900, 116 years before I lived there. Needless to say, the place was a bit eerie. Within the first week of moving in, my friends and I experienced all sorts of little unexplainable events. Things like doors closing on their own, disembodied footsteps, and just a general sense of unease. At some point, we named our ghost Connie and would attribute these events to her. Oh, Connie closed the door on me when I was doing laundry. And Connie slammed a window when I was making dinner. The whole building definitely had a weird atmosphere. We learned to live with our resident ghost and all the hijinks she pulled. Sometime that spring though, Connie gave me the biggest fright of my life. It was early one Saturday and I was awake before my friends. I was in the communal bathroom, brushing my teeth at the sink. The way the sinks and mirrors were situated you could see the door to the hallway in the reflection. The door was always propped open, so by looking in the mirror, you had clear sight of the hallway. I'm standing there brushing my teeth when I notice something strange over my shoulder in the reflection. To my surprise, I see a woman walking silently past the door and continuing onto the hallway. She had brown hair tied up in a bun, and she was carrying something like towels or linens in her arms. Her dress was a simple pale blue. She didn't make a noise as she glided past. Time seemed to freeze. I was so stunned, I didn't even move or scream. Since I lived in the attic, I'm thinking Connie must have been a servant who lived up there in the early 1900s. That was the only time any of us saw her, and I will never forget that morning. She continued her shenanigans of moving things around and closing doors after that, but never again did we see her gliding quietly down the hallway. Story number four. 
About seven years ago, I purchased my small 100-year-old house as it was all I could afford to purchase on my own. I always felt it had a warm and comfortable energy. I was fostering a dog that had bad separation anxiety. My grandma mentioned to me that I could have a radio playing while I was gone to ease the dog's nerves. We went to a little thrift store that was down the road from me. I hadn't really noticed it before, but we went inside to look for a cheap radio. We found an old radio that also had a built-in landline phone. It was covered in red wax strips and looked quite old. We verified it turned on and decided to purchase it as it was only $2. I had used the radio a few times before the dog got adopted. I left the radio in the downstairs laundry room as I didn't really have a use for it anymore. One day I got home from a late shift at work. I went to my kitchen which is next to my laundry room. I made myself dinner and went upstairs for the night. However, once I got upstairs, I heard voices coming from downstairs. Scared and confused, I slowly crept downstairs to see what was going on. The radio had turned on while I was upstairs. It moved from one station to another while I walked downstairs, but stayed on a single station when I got to the laundry room. I was the only person home and checked and verified that both doors were still locked. I knew that I didn't turn the radio on. Terrified, I unplugged the radio and went back upstairs, my heart racing. Nothing else happened for the rest of the night, and I was able to fall asleep feeling comfortable and safe. My next day off, I decided to go to the thrift store down the road to see if they knew where the radio came from. But when I arrived, I realized the thrift store was gone. The building was empty and it was as if the thrift store was never there. I ended up donating the radio as I was too freaked out to leave it in my home. But the odd thing is, besides the initial scare of the radio being turned on, I've never felt threatened or scared in my home. I still live in the same house and it always feels warm and comfortable. I've never had any other paranormal experience. I like to think that an old sweet spirit finally saw a piece of technology they knew how to use and wanted to put music on for me. We have reached the end of the third episode of Spooky Repot. I sincerely hope that you've enjoyed. I know I've enjoyed. I enjoy every year creating this series. It's so fun and really gets me into the Halloween spirit. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Let me know in the comments which episode was your favorite this year, one, two, or three. I would love to hear from you. Again, a huge thank you to everyone who has submitted a story and to all of you who watch this series, share it, engage with it, like it, purchase my Spooky Repot merch. I appreciate the support so, so much. And I'm glad that with your support, I've been able to continue this series. That's going to be it from me. Happy Halloween. If you're looking for more spooky repots to watch this Halloween, I will link the playlist down below in the description. So if you haven't seen them all, there's four, now four years worth of spooky repot videos for you to catch up on. Thank you so, so much, everybody, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.